episode 20. I did it my wave. Originally posted November 15, 2012. If you ask anyone who watched the original G1 Transformers cartoon, who was one of the most memorable and unique characters in the series, I'm pretty sure Soundwave's name would come up quite a lot. Yup, the Decepticon's original communications officer had a lot going for him. He had that cool, monotonous effects, rich processed voice. He was bigger than your typical Autobots, and as seen in the first episode, beat up multiple bots at the same time. And of course, he had his little private army residing in his chest. Unfortunately, for all the pluses Soundwave had going for himself, he did have one major drawback. Hey, we can't all be perfect. While his fellow Transformers turned into jets, cars, and weapons of destruction, he turned into a Walkman. If you handed any kid today a Walkman, they would probably look at you with a puzzled look on their face and ask you what they were holding, or at least ask where the touchscreen was. Unfortunately, the Walkman doesn't exude the same coolness factor or even cultural relevance today as it did way back in 1984. And the same goes for his buddies, Laserbeak, Ravage, Rumble, Frenzy, and company, who transformed into cassettes. Yup, back then, a robot that transformed into cassette player with minions that transformed into cassettes was a cool idea. Today, it's pretty much all irrelevant. But like I said earlier, you really can't keep a good character down, even if his alt mode has gone the way of the dodo. So given the problem at hand, the solution was quite simple. Make him transform into something else, duh. Since the original toy, there have been several updates to the character, mostly official and others made by third parties. Some versions had him transform into objects still close to his original alt mode, like a micro cassette player, yep, those still exist for some reason, or an MP3 player disguised as a Walkman. But most updated versions of Soundwave have basically had him transforming into actual useful vehicles, while at the same time having it relate to either communication, music, stealth, and spying and have some way to have detachable complementary components that his minions would transform into, just to keep him sort of true to the spirit of the original character. Soundwave has been a Cybertronian truck that ejects data disks, an Earth truck with what looked like giant speakers. He's been a stealth bomber, a drone plane, a satellite, and well, a Mercedes-Benz with tentacles of death. Of all the different updated and modern versions of Soundwave, I do have my favorites, and so I'd like to tell you about them. First up is Soundwave from the series Transformers Prime. I admit initially I wasn't so blown away by this design. This slender and lean version was quite a departure from the original blocky design from G1, but it was how this character was depicted on the show that ultimately won me over. He is this embodiment of creepiness, sulking in the shadows, recording bits of conversation for blackmail to use to his advantage in the future. But when push came to shove, he kicked all sorts of ass with his healthy supply of tentacles. The drone plane alt mode is just perfect as well, to emphasize more the super secret spy aspect of the character. And as an added bonus, he still came with his own version of Laserbeak that, although doesn't really transform into anything, the smaller drone plane fits seamlessly into his chest. Just perfect. Next up is Soundwave from the Transformers animated series. This show featured an overall radical aesthetic that was really a love it or hate it type. As a whole, the style of the show was a major departure from anything we as fans had ever seen in a Transformers cartoon. I for one loved it, and a big reason why is because unlike most Transformer cartoons, Hasbro Takara Tomy did an amazing job of actually translating all these hyper-stylized designs into fairly accurate toys. Of course, it helped immensely that the show is probably one of the best written Transformers series to date, in my opinion of course. Anyway, in the series, Soundwave was more of a reoccurring character rather than one of the main Decepticons. But he had quite an original and interesting origin. The details are a bit fuzzy, it's been quite some time since I've actually seen it, but I do remember him actually starting out as a musical kid's toy that somehow got corrupted, turned evil, replicated, and combined to form a big Soundwave. Essentially, he was Chucky for the Transformers world. Like I said, as a reoccurring character, he only made appearances in two or three episodes. As a Transformer, he didn't really transform into anything exciting. A nondescript van with one can imagine huge speakers in the back or something. But what really pushed his design over the top for me was his pal Laserbeak. Like the G1 series, Laserbeak was a condor here as well. But he didn't transform into a cassette. He transformed into a guitar. And not just any guitar, an electric guitar of doom. That's right. This Soundwave wasn't satisfied with just terrifying little kids. He wanted to rock on. 
and blast all the Autobot audio receptors with his death metal music of death. And it gets even better. After the initial release, an updated Soundwave repaint was released, no longer with Laserbeak, but with a new minion, Ratbat, and he transformed into a Keytar. Yup, you heard that right, a Keytar. Simply amazing. Unfortunately, the line was cut short, or I'm sure we would have eventually had Ravage as a bass guitar and Rumble and Frenzy combining to form a drum set. How awesome would that have been? But as cool as these modern renditions were, at the end of the day, you can't beat the original. So after a number of numerous updated sound waves through the years, Hasbro finally gave us a Back to Basics one in 2020 with their Earthrise sound wave that transformed into, you guessed it, a Walkman. And finally, on the masterpiece and third-party front, Soundwave has quite an interesting story, starting way back in 2006, during the baby years of third-party Transformers. A brand new company called Fanstoys announced their first ever attempt at a masterpiece-style Transformer with a series of prototype pictures posted online. Dubbed Acoustic Wave, this was to be their version of a masterpiece Soundwave. But not long after that, Takara Tomi announced the imminent release of their own official version, and possibly fearing weak sales, or worse, a lawsuit, Fans Toys immediately scrapped their plans for Acoustic Wave and he became a mere footnote in the history of third-party Transformers. Fast forward 13 years later, by this time Fans Toys had firmly established itself as one of the top, if not the number one third-party companies for masterpiece-style Transformers, and they surprised everyone by announcing their plans to finally release an updated version of their Acoustic Wave. And in 2021, that became a reality with Acoustic Wave finally shipping out to collectors' hands. Curiously, the toy was released under a new company, Robot Paradise, with the new name, possibly meant to protect the main Fans Toys brand safe from Takara Hasbro, didn't fool anyone. This is a Fans Toys release through and through. As opposed to the original 2006 design, this final release went with a cleaner and more streamlined cartoon accurate aesthetic. But Fans Toys thoughtfully included a number of swappable parts for those who prefer the more detailed toy look. And while some might argue that the transformation isn't as smooth as the official one, it's still not terrible, and I do think it's perfectly fine. I mean, you're basically folding up a robot into a rectangular box. How can you over-engineer that? Now, the official MP Soundwave is still to this day considered as one of the best released by Hasbro Takara. But it's been over a decade old, and standing next to Acoustic Wave, I think his age really starts to show. Ultimately, judging by the overall look to the build and materials used, for me, Acoustic Wave is clearly the superior sound wave. And that should cover it for the sound waves in my collection. Now I'm sure that I'm not the only sound wave fan out there. Let me know what your favorite versions of this guy are. Oh, and in case there's any doubt, Frenzy is red and Rumble is Periwinkle. But that's another story for another time. Thanks for checking out Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. For more stories, please like and subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell for updates, or visit my website at storiesfromthetoyshelf.com, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until the next one.